All right, in this video, I want to talk a lot about inheritance. Um, and in particular, last time I talked about how in the real world, we see this notion of multiple inheritance. For example, um, I'm a person, and you could represent a person with an object, uh, but you know, people often have multiple roles, right? Maybe, uh, maybe I might be both like a student and an instructor at the same time. I might be an employee. And uh, so we might have these kind of ho complex hierarchies of types where uh, maybe a given person or object or anything might kind of fall under multiple categories or types. And so I, I want to kind of look at uh, how, how that works. And it certainly complicates um, kind of what happens when we override methods. For a given object, it might be of many different types, each of which have a method of the same name. So when I call a method, well, which one am I actually actually calling? And so what I've done here is I have a little bit of a code snippet on the left. Um, I have some classes, and um, and then I'm drawing those classes over here on the right. So the, the picture corresponds to the code. And, and then just to kind of keep it simple so we can focus on the pure logic of it, I don't actually show the methods. I just say what they are. So the A class is, uh, you should imagine it to have an F2 method and a G method. And so the way I draw that over here is that A has F2 and G. And then remember that all classes, uh, that if they don't kind of explicitly inherit from something, they inherit from the object type, which is what you're seeing, seeing here. Uh, the B method, B inherits from A, so B inherits from A. B has an F1 and a G method, which I'm showing in brackets here. Um, later, when you get down to here, for example, with um, E1, I'm inheriting from two things. I'm inheriting from C and D, so E1 goes to C and D. And there's a preference. When you're inheriting from two parents, you always, inherit, you always prefer the left parent, right? So E1 prefers C, and that's why I put a one here. And then, then D is its second choice, which is why I put it a two here. Okay, so I've done that. I kind of create all these things. This is the picture. And then from that, I'm creating a few different objects from different types in this picture. Um, now, the first thing we want to do is add some code for class E2, right? I can see that E2 is over here but I haven't written any code for that yet. So, so let's do that. So, so we have to have a class E2. And, uh, and, and well, how will we do that? I guess I'll say class, class E2. And well, what I see is that its favorite parent is D, right? I have arrow one goes to D, and then its second favorite parent is C. So basically the exact opposite of E1. Right, so, so its favorite parent is D, and its second favorite is C. Okay, so it's like that. And then, does it have any methods? It has no methods, so I'll maybe make a, a note here, right? No methods. Okay, great. So I've done that, I've added the code for E2. Okay, um, so there was a, some missing code, right? There's something in the in the diagram that wasn't in the code. Uh, question two says that there's also something missing in the in the class hierarchy, right? Something is missing over here that um, that I have here, right? So I should update this picture, and, and this is a good opportunity to just pause and, and kind of until you see what is missing and kind of imagine what that would look like. So pause me. A, I'm back, I'm assuming you unpaused. And so if you kind of go down this list here and then look at all the classes over here, what you're gonna see is that the M method is what is missing. Or I'm sorry, not the M method, the M class. And M is a child of B and E1. So, so I'm gonna just draw M, M over here. And uh, does M have any methods? Uh, it has no methods, so. I'm just going to draw it like that. And then its favorite parent is B, right? So I'm going to put a one here. That's the favorite parent. And the second favorite parent is E1. And that's the second favorite. So that's what I'll draw it, right? Okay, so I've done that. Uh, I've kind of completed all the code and the diagram now. And now I have three questions which are basically, well, what's going to get called? 
And, and there, all of these three are about X. And where is X? X is of type M, right? So, so let me just make a note here. X is an object of type M. And, and this is going to be tricky, right? Because say for G, guess what? Here's a G and here's a G. Uh, for F1, here's an F1 and here's an F1. For F2, here's an F2 and here's an F2. And, and so there's kind of all these complicated rules about which method it's called if I, if I run a piece of code like this. And it turns out that this, there's actually an algorithm for determining this. It's called the C3 algorithm. Um, there's a paper about it, which is kind of actually horribly difficult to read. And, um, and so what I want to do here is just kind of lay out three rules so you can intuit and kind of figure out in the common cases uh, which method will be called. And, and so, you know, uh, this kind of gets very complicated. And, and for this reason, some programming languages don't even have multiple inheritance. Uh, every type can have at most one parent. Uh, Python kind of has this complexity, so we're going to think about it at least um, in this lecture, even though I may avoid it for most of the class. Okay, so the first one, and, and, and for all of these, right, I haven't shown you the rules yet, but what I want you to do is I want you to at least make a prediction, right? What matches your intuition? And after you've made the prediction, well, I'll tell you. So what do you think? What method gets called when I say x dot g? Am I, calling, am I calling the A version of g or the B version of g? And the answer is that I'm going to call the B version of, of g and the rule right is that we want to prefer prefer closer right that's kind of the general rule right and if i'm starting at m right i, I see there's g and there's g and so i prefer that the one that's closer and let me just be very clear when i'm talking about closer you can only go up in this hierarchy right you can never go down Right, so I can only go up, but as I go up, well, what is closer? And in this case, B is closer, so that's what I prefer. Okay, so the next one, I'm calling X dot F1, and I see that, well, I guess there's two F1s, right? I mean, I could call the B version of F1, or I could call the E version. So what do you think? Which one is it going to call? And the answer is, again, we prefer the B version. Why? Well, let me just write this down first. Why? Because B is our favorite parent. And remember, left parents uh, are preferred over right parents. And, and so we're going to go that route. We're going to go B. Okay, so I'm going to say prefer, prefer left as I'm kind of going up this hierarchy. And, and by left, I'm kind of talking about, you know, uh, here, right? B is before E1 and that last. <clears throat> <clears throat> now you can imagine how these rules could um, kind of contradict each other, right? I mean, what if I have something that's really far away along the left, right? It's kind of really far away along the left, or I have something that's really close to the right. And the answer is that Kind of going in this direction, I'm going from weaker to stronger rules. Right? These are stronger rules. And so what that means is that I'll prefer going left. I'll prefer going left, even if it's really far away. To me, that's better than going right. Okay. Let me just try to be racist to clean it up a little bit. Okay. The last one is what method will x.f2? invoke and um and kind of looking at the rules well well first where are the two f2s i guess i have one here here's an f2 right so i could have the a version and uh, here's an f2 so i could have the d version right so i really have the a version or the d version and looking at the whole rules we have so far you'd probably say well i prefer a because it's to the left but it turns out there's one more rule and that is prefer descendants.
right? So in this case, right, when I'm kind of considering these two, I mean, I could just think about which one goes left and which one goes right, but these two actually have a relationship between them, right? D is a descendant of A, and by a descendant, I mean, it could be a child or a grandchild or a great-great-grandchild. And this is the strongest rule of all, preferred ascendants. So even though preferring left might take us to A, this is a stronger rule. And this is going to take me, this is going to take me to D. Right, so those are the three rules. And that kind of captures that algorithm that I was talking about in that very complicated paper. So just remember those three rules and kind of apply them in, in order. Okay, let's, um, moving on, let's kind of mix in special methods with inheritance. So if I call print X, what is that going to invoke? Right, so again, X is, is of type M down here. And, um, and so remember when I print things, I'm calling the underscore underscore STR method. And so I have this up here and I have this down here. And so what will I do? Well, I prefer descendants, right? This one is a descendant of this one. That was my strongest rule. And so what is it going to do? It's going to end up using the D version. Okay. So we've done a lot of X, which was of type M. Now, in this next question, we're going to look at W. And W is of type C. So I'm just make a little note up here, right? So I'm looking at W now. W is of type C. I wonder, I wonder if you can really tell that. Let me, there, there's W. And I'm printing W. So what, what does that one do? Well, in that case, you know, I can only look up, right? I can look at my, you know, I can look at myself, I can look at my parents, I can look at my grandparents, my great, great grandparents. This one is, is really kind of a cousin, right? I can't get from here to here, right? I can't go back backwards on that arrow. So really, my only choice is up here, right? So the, the answer is the object version. I can't reach D, right? So I'm just going to say here, I'm going to take the stir method from object. OK, uh, another variable, which is y. Uh, y is of type E1, so here is Y, and I guess for the next one too I may have Z, which is Z is of type E2, so I'm just going to make a note of that now uh, for the next question. So what method will Y.H invoke? Okay, so let me look at this. So here I have Y, and well, I could go here, right, there's the C.H, or I could have this one. And it looks like C is my preferred parent because, because over here it comes first, right? C comes before D. So C is my left parent, so it's my preferred parent. So that's where I prefer to take my methods from. And, and so the answer is, well, I'm going to take it from C. <laughs> okay, what about Z, right? So Z is of type E2. And I have the same two parents, but now... Now I can see that D is my preferred parent, right? You see how I have a one there, right? Because if I look over here at E2, <clears throat> D comes before C, right? So D is my left parent in this case. So in this case, I'm going to call the D version, right? So even though uh, Y and Z are two different types and those two different types have the same parents, sometimes I'm going to uh, kind of inherit from one and one I'm, sometimes I'm going to inherit from the other. <clears throat> now, there's a lot of complexity here, and I've been talking about the rules, and I think that hopefully this gives you a new appreciation for something I taught last time, which is method resolution order, right? And, um, and method resolution order, just to remind you, is a special attribute for classes, okay? So just like we've seen kind of special methods uh, uh, as well, and special attributes are the same, except there's no parentheses at the end, I'm not calling them. And so it's for classes, and what that means is I can put, you know, a class name and then say dot MRO. So, so I can do that. I cannot do this. I cannot say W MRO because W, it's not a class, it's an object, right? W is not a class, it's an object. 
So I can't do this. That's invalid. That will crash. Uh, this is correct. And, and what this will do is really save me a lot of time, right? Because it'll tell me that, you know, it'll tell me something like, our first choice is to pick methods from here. Our second choice is to pick methods from A. Our third choice is to uh, pick methods from B. And they'll tell me that by giving me a tuple with C, A, object um, in that order, right? So we have kind of all these complicated rules. The method resolution order is going to tell us exactly how those rules play out and what the final answer is. <clears throat> okay, I want to talk a little bit about types and also introduce this new method, which is isInstance. Okay, and when I'm calling isInstance, I have a bunch of examples here, but what will happen is that I'll take like a, a, an object and a class, and those are going to be the two things, right? And basically what I'm going to ask is, what does is instance do? It asks me, is object, is it of type class or some ancestor of class, right? Ancestor could be parent, grandparent, whatever. And is instance is going to be a little more flexible than all of these calls with type that are kind of checking what the type of an object is. So, so let's draw through some of these. So what is the type of Y and is it equal to M? So when I'm doing this, I'm just trying to evaluate this. The type of Y is E1. So I'm going to cross this off. This is E1. And, um, and maybe I'll just make a note here. That is, I guess instead of circling, I'm just trying to say that's false. Uh, that's a little bit of a messy F. That is false, right? Because E1 is not equal to M. Okay, the next one. The type of W is C, right? So is C equal to A? No, right? Because it's just, it's different, right? It's a different class, so that's false too. But let me skip ahead a little bit and see what happens instead of asking if the type of W is A. What if I say is instance W A? In that case, I figure out what type W is, and, and W is of type C. And then I kind of check up the hierarchy, and I see, do I have some ancestor that is A? And guess what I do, right? Even though W isn't an A, it's an instance of A because it's a C and a C is a kind of A, right? So, so this one down here is instance W A. That's actually true. That's a true statement. Okay, let's just do a couple more here. So type of W equal to C, that's true, right? W is a C, so that's true. Um, is type of Y equal to E1? Yeah, Y is an E1, so that's true. Okay, is instance Z A? So Z is an E2, right? I have it here. And can I get to A from here? Yeah, I actually, a couple ways I can get to A, right? Let's try my grandparent twice over. And so that's a true statement. Okay, is Y, is Y an instance of M? So Y is of type E1. So I start here and I can only go up. Right, I can't, I can't kind of go down here. So this is false, right? I can kind of only go up the hierarchy. Um, what about this? Is B an instance of A? So that's a little bit tricky, right? Because I guess both B and A are classes, right? I have B in here, um, but the rule is I can only have an object and a class for this instance method. There are, there are other um, uh, functions that I don't really find a use for very often that could kind of check if one class um, is a descendant of another but I'm not trying to talk about them in this class. So this would actually just, um, you know, if I want run this, this is going to crash. It's not going to return true or false, it's going to fail. Okay, is W an instance of C? So I have W here, yeah, well, directly, right? I mean, if the type of W equals C, if the type of W equals C, then this is definitely also true, right? I mean, this is kind of, uh, kind of accepting more kinds of relationships. Right, so that's absolutely true. 
The last one is y, an instance of e1. So is y an instance of e1? You know, that's the same thing. That's also, also definitely true. Great, so, so we kind of learned about how to think about the hierarchy um, in terms of, of code. We learned the rules for which methods are gonna get called. Um, we learned again about method resolution order, how it helps us answer these questions. And then we learned some ways to explore both the type of an object and, um, and kind of where the type of an object might fit into some hierarchy. And we can write code to check that.